Hello everyone, it is Saturday um, because I need to get ahead of myself a little bit after having to rush last night to film a couple and then upload and get, get rushing through some absolute crackers yesterday as well. Fantastic stuff. Um, so I'm going to stick with Lowland whiskies, but I'm not going to do um, single malts because um, I haven't got any left. Um, the only one I potentially could get would be um, a little mill on its own, but I think that's going to be highly unlikely. Um, so what I'm going to do is stick around the same region, but um, do a couple of grain whiskies, and then um, the next after these two, the next one will be a, a blend, and then I think that's me pretty much done for Lowland. I think I've got it as covered off as I potentially could do. Um, so, um, we're going to do a couple of grains, um, uh, but they're from two separate grain distilleries. So the first one is this one, which was uh, donated very kindly by Mr. X. And um, this is from the Girvan distillery. So um, it ties in neatly with um, the Ailsa Bay that I had a couple of days ago, uh, which is from that distillery as well. And with the Ladyburn that we had last night, um, we. I was lucky enough to have. You might have had it, but it's probably more likely that you've not had it because it's really hard to get hold of. So, uh, yes, if you can do so, phenomenal stuff. Um, so, yes, yeah, so the Girvan Distillery is here and was set up in 1963 by William Grant and Sons, um, essentially as their main base for all the grain whiskies that they needed for their blends. Um, now, apparently, Black Barrel. Uh, was re launched in 1995 and went to um, France, Spain and Portuguese markets. And this particular one, uh, which, whoops, which did come in a little tin as well, is actually a, it's a Millennium Limited Edition, um, which was actually bottled for charity. So um, there was only 2,000 bottles of this, whether it's 2,000 miniatures, because um, it is actually handwritten on the label that this is number 1416. So presumably 2,000 miniatures were made uh, of Black Barrel. Um, so yeah, I'm assuming this was like a, a charity release with its same Millennium, probably for the Millennium, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, very kind of Mr. X to, uh, to include this in the, the rather hefty donation that he sent my way. Because um, whether there's actually any value on this or rarity or anything like that, I don't know, unless he had a few of them and, and this was a spare one. So at the moment, I'm struggling to um, get the actual pack bit off the top there's no um, plastic on the tops being a bit of a bugger um, but yeah you know I've kind of covered Girvan off obviously I had a um, I've had a Girvan on its own but I don't actually remember having that I've got it in my notes that I did a Girvan um, but I don't remember having this Girvan on its own oh actually no it was from Mormon Mike wasn't it it was the um, young one I don't know, they're all blurring into each other, to be perfectly honest. Um, but yes, I've had Girvan. Obviously, we've had Ailsa Bay a couple of days ago. We had Ladyburn yesterday. So this is kind of the, the one that's left, almost, um, from the Girvan distillery as a as a single release on its own. So, single grain. In terms of the age, couldn't say. Couldn't find out, to be honest. It doesn't say on, the, on this particular label. And um, I couldn't find out whether there was any particular age on it. So... It might be a combination, it might be one of these where they're using a combination of old and young and not putting an age statement on it. Um, or it could just be it's relatively young. Now, grain whiskey ages really, really well um, because it's quite kind of generically quite tight and quite hard. It actually takes quite a while in cask in maturation to mellow out. And you know, a lot of the like really, really good grains that I've had before have been like 20, 25, 30 year olds. But that time in cask it makes it more expensive so to get a really really good aged grain whiskey single grain whiskey particularly you're actually looking at paying 100 150 quid because it's normally like a 25 30 year old um but as we're finding and as we'll find at the next one as well you know things like hay club it's more affordable and it's probably quite young but it is still drinkable it is drinkable hay club is drinkable it's just dull boring but you know you don't need necessarily need a very very old grain whiskey to uh, to get something that is still drinkable and still enjoyable so in in terms of how old this is i don't know it is i'm not going to say it's quite light in color um it's it's kind of like an oaky chardonnay color not too dissimilar to the dunglass that i had last night 
Um, but there is obviously the potential that colouring has been added in. So you can't really tell what the age is by looking at the colour by going, well, it's probably a 15 year old judging by that colour. It's difficult to judge, tell an age by colour anyway, because there's far too many factors involved in terms of what's it being matured in, what, what what's it had in previously, was it first fill, was it virgin, was it refill? All sorts of factors involved. So um, if somebody tells you um, that they can tell the age of whiskey by looking at the colour, there's a 99% chance that they're talking absolute nonsense or you're talking to somebody like Dave Broom and Richard Paterson and people like that. So, let's see how this goes. Ooh, there's a nice um, kind of blackberry, blackcurrant juiciness to it. Quite fresh, but yeah, there's a definite kind of like a fresh uh, dark berry um, juicy vibe to it. Very pleasant, it's quite tight on the nose still, but the, the the aromas that are there are actually really pleasant. But there is a metallic-y edginess to it as well. Now I quite like that, um, I quite like that element, because it, it, it's, um, it's something that I pick up on Irish whiskies as well. It might be a little off-putting for some, because it, it, you could turn it the other way and say it's quite a harsh nose. Again, that juiciness is still there. There's a little bit of a, it sort of got me at the back of the throat a little bit there. But again, it's juicy. It's quite mouth-watering as well. It doesn't really dry it out, but you have to work a little bit with this one. Let me check the uh, percentage. Doesn't say, does it say? Yes, 40%. So it's 40% and it did hit me a little bit at the back of the throat. So I'll try it again. It's quite a nice mouthfeel to it. Got me again, just a little bit at the back of the throat. So there's a bit of heat there, even with it being 40%. But it's very juicy. It's very blackberry, black currant. And then there's that mouthwatering. It's, it's like, um, kind of like uh, purple Skittles, like black currant, opal fruits, starbursts, whatever they're called now. Um, black currant candied sweets, like Skittles and Starburst that make your mouth water at the same time. It's very nice, very nice indeed. Um, it's a little bit hard work because of the, the, the harshness of the whiskey itself, and that's, that's uh, in, indicative of a grain whiskey. It's not a fault of the whiskey, it's not a bad whiskey. This is kind of what grain whiskies are like. Everything's a little closed up, um, and you have this edge and this sharpness and this metallic, metallic -y is is always the, the word that I keep using because it's the closest I can come to try and describe what this kind of feel is but it's not unpleasant to me it's not licking your fingers after carrying copper coins and that being like oh god it's it's not like that but it's not too dissimilar it's kind of that in a good way but that probably makes no sense whatsoever but this this is very nice indeed. What I don't know is whether this is a true representation of what the Black Barrel release is in France, Spain and Portugal. I don't even know actually if it's still available because when I'm doing Google searches on Black Barrel, it's coming up with Jameson's because apparently they've got Black Barrel, um, but I can't find it like for sale. It's all auctions and things like that. So if they're, if they're still making it and they're still shipping it out there, I wouldn't even like to guess how much that would be because it's a grain, so they can make a lot of it, but they need that grain for um, their blends, which there's probably even more of a demand for. So is this actually a cheap whiskey over in Europe or is this slightly higher end because they can't really afford to give that much stock away towards this release? Either way, I'm really liking this. There's quite a nice mouthfeel as well. It's quite rich in the mouth. It's not, uh, it's not light, it's not wishy-washy. There's a nice rich depth to it. Um, and then, for, right, I'm hoping this hasn't stopped doing because it's now asking me if I want to update iOS. I don't want to update iOS. It keeps asking me this every single day. Do I want to update it? No, I keep telling you no. Stop asking me, bloody Apple. Um, it, apparently it's still recording, so you've now got me pointing at the screen and doing stupid stuff, uh, for which I apologize, but it's Apple's fault. Um, so yeah, really nice mouthfeel, nice depth to it, a nice, a nice, a nice, a nice, 
a nice richness, but there is a lovely, juicy uh, black berries, black currants, black, um, uh, almost cherryish as well, kind of black cherry. Really nice juiciness, which is mouth watering. The finish, while it's not long, is very pleasant and it lingers long enough that it just doesn't disappear after two seconds. All in all, that is really, really nice. And if that is a relatively kind of bog standard whiskey in France and Spain and Portugal that's still being released, and it's the equivalent of like 15 quid or something like that, it's a ruddy bargain, because that's really, really nice stuff. Really like that. Right, I'll do a quick rinse out, and then we'll crack on with the next one, which could be interesting and eventful. Um, so yes, I shall see you in the next one. Cheers.